Hey guys, I'm going to share with you my recipe for Guinness chocolate cupcakes with Bailey's frosting. So let's get baking. I'm going to be using a mixing bowl today for our dry ingredients. So I put in the flour and then I've added some cocoa powder and also salt, baking soda, and espresso powder. The espresso powder is going to just help to enhance the cocoa and the stout flavors. And then in another larger mixing bowl, I'm going to be adding our brown sugar and our melted butter. When you melt the butter, it really helps the ingredients to combine to give the cake a nice tender crumb. I'm just going to mix these up a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and add in the eggs. And here's an important tip. Make sure that all of your cold ingredients are at room temperature, especially the Guinness. And if you're using a different type of style, it doesn't matter. You have to make sure that it is flat and at room temperature. If it's cold, it just does not rise up and the cupcakes don't have the same nice tender texture as they do. Another ingredient that makes these really tender and just very sort of melt in your mouth buttery is full fat sour cream. Give that a quick whisk, and then we're gonna add in our dry ingredients in two parts. So the reason why we're doing two parts is because it's easier on the mixers, and it also incorporates better. And if you're a really messy baker like I can be sometimes, it's going to help you to avoid those giant messes going everywhere. I'm going to add the rest of the dry ingredients and then I'm going to give it a good whisk. So one tip that I have when it comes to over mixing and how to avoid it. So before my ingredients are just incorporated, I like to turn off the mixer and then use a rubber spatula to scrape down the bowl and just mix it in fully. And because you're doing it by hand, it's not quite as harsh and it helps to avoid over mixing. The batter will be on the thicker side before we add the Guinness. So I made a mistake and somehow it got all shaken up and yep, it kind of went everywhere. But in a way I could look on the bright side here and it worked out for me because you don't want to add the foam into the cup. So my advice is to let it go flat or scoop out the foam, drink it, spill it on the floor like how I did. Whatever it is, you just don't want the foam in the recipe. It really kind of takes away from the flavor. No other Guinness cans were harmed in the making of this video. Anyway, we're going to whisk together those ingredients and you can see that the batter becomes a lot thinner and that's just what we want. So I like to scoop about two thirds full because these don't rise up too much. This recipe makes 24 standard size cupcakes. If you wanted to make mini cupcakes, it will make about 96 and you can also turn this into a two layer nine inch cake. Just make sure that you watch the baking times. And you can also do a three layer six inch cake with a little bit of batter left over. While the cupcakes are baking and cooling, it's time for us to start making our buttercream. So it's really important that the butter is at room temperature because it's just going to make your life easier. And if you don't have any time, a really quick zap in the microwave for about 30 seconds to one minute on a low power setting can also help to soften up the butter. I try not to do that, but you know, sometimes you just don't have the time. So I'm going to add the butter into a stand mixer with a paddle attachment and I'm going to whip it up on a high speed for about 30 seconds so that it gets nice and creamy. Then I'm just going to wipe down the sides of the bowl and this maybe is like an OCD thing but I just can't stand when the mixing bowl, the sides are just not wiped down. Then I'm going to add our powdered sugar in about three different parts. So there are three and three fourths cup of powdered sugar that's going in here. For the full recipe, you can check out the link below and I also include gram measurements as well. I'm going to add one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. You can use milk or whole milk if you'd like, but heavy whipping cream does have a different texture and flavor, so I do recommend trying to add that. And then for the star of our show, I'm adding in our Baileys. Now Baileys is an Irish cream liqueur and it has a really nice chocolatey vanilla type of taste and it's just going to complement the buttercream really well. So I went for three tablespoons and you can definitely taste the Baileys in the icing. If you want to cut back a little I recommend trying two tablespoons first but one tablespoon just didn't really have enough flavor at all. So I'm also going to add in half a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. You want to make sure that everything gets nice and mixed and I'm going to leave the stand mixer on low for about five minutes because that really helps to smooth out the buttercream. And here's a test that I'm doing. If the little top of 
the icing kind of bends a little bit, you know that you're almost there. So just keep mixing it a little bit and then you'll get that soft consistency. And while the stand mixer is running, I'm just going to chop up some chocolate. I'm just using a semi-sweet chocolate. It doesn't have to be anything specific. This is just going to help to add some decoration to the top of our cupcakes. Now it's time to decorate these cupcakes. So they have cooled down and I have put buttercream into a piping bag prepared with an Ateco number 849 tip. This is a wide closed star tip which gives this nice rose appearance or soft serve ice cream swirl kind of appearance. My favorite way to do a swirl on top of a cupcake is to start it in the inside and then swirl it outwards. When you start on the outside and swirl it inwards, it's not quite as pretty and neat looking. You just want to start in the center and then apply even pressure to the piping bag. And once you reach the end of the swirl, you just want to kind of pull it down and away. That way the swirl gets tucked in better to the rest of the cupcake, if, if that makes sense. It's something that you might need to do a little bit of practice on, but once you get it, it's really easy to do. For the final look, I'm going to just dip half of the cupcake into that chocolate that we chopped up earlier. Because there's still some slightly bigger pieces of chocolate too, it gives it a nice crunchy texture. So can you taste the alcohol in these cupcakes? Yes, you can. You can definitely taste it in the buttercream and the stout and the chocolate just complement each other really well. You can store these cupcakes for about four days at room temperature in an airtight container or a month in the freezer. Thanks guys for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.